Hey there. Did you know Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Kroger app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Kroger today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. of the reality is, as always, it's newer and I'm writing solo today. Um, I'm just going to be talking about Real Housewives of uh, Atlanta. And as I've mentioned many times, my favorite show on Bravo right now, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Um, let's jump into Atlanta. Um, so this was a very controversial opening of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, so much so that I watched it when it was on TV on Sunday night, and then I watched it again on Peacock because I missed a little bit of it. And I didn't have any issues with this, but apparently people were watching on Peacock and it like cut in the middle of their viewing and then the episode disappeared. So the reason behind this was that you know, they showed the Marlo versus Candy beef through the years from 2011 to now. And when they show the 2011 Real Houses of Atlanta, they showed that opening vignette, right? Like the all the ladies standing there with the peaches. Nini was edited out of that. And obviously the internet was a buzz. And so if you don't know why they would have done it, it's because Nini and Bravo are not in a great place, guys. It's bad times for Nini and Bravo. Um, she tried to sue the company. There's no way in the world that there is ever going to be a Nini Leaks comeback on Bravo. I really don't believe it. Um, when you try to sue the company and tell them that um, because of racial discrimination, I don't think that um, Bravo is really going to want you back, babe. Um, and you know, do I believe that Bravo was racist and Nini experienced racial discrimination? Yeah, because she's a black woman in the world. That is going to happen. She's a black woman in the world in a corporate environment. Yes. Um, or even in a not corporate environment. She's a black woman existing in the world. She's going to face racial discrimination. Um, but they edited her out of the opening and then people were pissed and then they, I guess, took that little clip out completely from the Peacock episode, which is smart of them. I mean, it was ballsy of them to do that, honestly, because if they had left Nini in the intro, nobody would have fucking said anything, right? Like, it wouldn't have been a big deal. I'm pretty sure we've seen Nini clips in the past, like throwbacks to Nini. I'm sure we have. So I don't see why that was such a, I felt, it felt like a petty move on the editor's behalf, but whatever. Anyway, this episode opened up with Marlo versus Candy through the years. We got this whole thing of like how their relationship started and everything. And honestly, it literally proves that Candy has been really kind to Marlo over the years. And it's not until last season when Marlo randomly went off on Candy for no reason at all, said that she was a hoe, said all these terrible things about her, that things truly like turned. Um, We have this scene with Marlo meeting with Ty and Justin, her managers, and they talk about wanting Marlo to start dating and Marlo acts like she's, oh my God, what am I going to do? What if I like it? If somebody touches my butt, like shut up, Marlo. Like I love Marlo and I wish that she would, like I love her as a TV personality. I just wish that she would be real, but it's very obvious that every season she's coming on and she's trying to sort of like, you know, uh, rehab her previous persona. Um, but like, Yes, of course, we want to know Marlo Hampton, the person, and I think that it's okay to get to know her, but I think that she's trying to show that part while also erasing the other parts of her. And the problem is the other parts of her can't stay in. They come out every other episode. But anyway, we pivot on this little meetup with Justin and Ty to the Blaze shooting incident, and Marlo is still peddling this nonsense that Candy never acknowledged it, even though we literally got the footage in the beginning of this episode 
that Candy was extremely kind and sweet to Marlo. Also, Candy has shared the actual screenshot of her text between her, the text between her and Marlo when Marlo said the thing about the shooting. And she was very kind. Like she was really nice. She was like, I'm really sorry to hear that. I just don't think that they put it in the episode because I think it makes it juicier. But essentially Marlo is peddling this idea that Candy didn't acknowledging it, acknowledge it, but it's not even about acknowledging it at this point. She's basically saying that she wants can she wanted Candy to pay for the funeral, to cater the food, call Marlo's sister to offer condolences for the death of a person that no longer works for Candy Burris, who I think briefly worked for Candy Burris. Um, what, what do you, what do you expect? And it felt to me like, like it just was confusing. Cause like I said, he didn't work for her anymore. He didn't get shot at her restaurant. It just sounds, and it even sounds a little bit like Marlo's like, oh, my family called me up and they were really mad at me about the fact that like Candy didn't do anything about it. And it feels to me like maybe her family, I feel like, you know, to give Marlo a little bit of grace, I wonder if it was that Marlo's family was expecting since Marlo had all these connections that they would have somebody pay for the funeral whether it's somebody from Bravo or Candy or whomever, like Marlo seems to have all these connections for a Fendi shopping session at her house, then maybe she has some connections who's going to um, pay for the funeral. You know what I mean? And I think it seems more like it's not so much that Marlo had that expectation, but now that her family called her up and yelled at her about it, that she, they all wanted Candy to have that expectation uh, or they all had that expectation from Candy. And it's ridiculous. Like, she does not owe you any of that. I, I, I just, what is this? It, 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 we'll get to Marlo. We'll get more into the relationship between Candy and Marlo later on. Um, Sonia, uh, she's having this whole thing about her family. They're leaving. They're not leaving. Last episode, they were going to leave. This episode, she's like, no, I don't want you to leave. Oh, Ross wants you to leave. I don't want you to leave. I don't care. It's Sonia is a flip-flopper. It's really obvious that Sonia is a flip-flopper. As, and, and I get it because I think she wants to keep the peace. But like on television shows and actually in real life, you you got to pick a side sometimes. You can't be a flip-flopper. Uh, Kenya Moore is opening up Kenya Moore Hair Spa, and it looks like it's going to be great. I'm really excited for Kenya. Um, And that was it. That was all the Kenya that we got this episode, guys. And then we got like a little bit of her with Candy at the end of this episode, but like we barely got any Kenya. Um, We had the scene with Sheree as a grandma. Um, The baby is so cute. Cairo is so handsome. I like just it's adorable but i have to say that giving kadoos to men for being dads is a reach okay like this girl that like i'm assuming is kairos like uh child like child's mother or girlfriend or whoever is like sitting there and like Sherry cannot stop gushing about like Cairo being so good with the baby. He's so good with the baby. So good with the baby. But like he's doing the things that women do all the time. And I just, it grinds my gear when people are like, oh my God, he's the best father in the world because he like changed a diaper or held the baby. I'm like, you know what? (laughs) That's ridiculous. Let's, let's not give kudos or kudos to men for doing the bare minimum. Okay. It's the bare minimum. Um, we have a scene with Drew and Ralph and they're doing like fakey, fakey family stuff, playing basketball. And we just kind of briefly talk about how like Ralph had dick surgery. (laughs) I think they mean a vasectomy, but I feel like the way that he reacted, I don't think Ralph actually went through with it. I wouldn't be surprised if Drew thinks that he did. And then he never did. Um, Drew tells Ralph about her beef with Marlo, which is, you know, goes back to that little meeting they had in like the end of episode two after her little show at City Winery with Candace, where she's saying like 40 for 43 seconds anyway. And then Marlo got mad at her about the shooting thing. Anyway, um, we get to cousin Courtney's escape room 
And I believe that there was an a, a scene in the last episode where Kenya was like, who gave this woman my phone number? <laughs> I agree. Who are you and why are you setting up escape rooms? <laughs> um, so before the event, Candy and Kenya talk about the Marlo situation and K- Kenya fills Candy in on what's been going on because at this point, Marlo has not said anything to Candy about her nephew's death and how she's still harboring all this resentment and why she's still mad. So she runs that whole situation down to Candy. And I love Candy because she says in the confessional, lying ass bitch. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Candy, Marlo, and Drew essentially have words at this um, escape room thing, and it goes as poorly as you think it's going to. But Marlo's beef is that she thinks people sugarcoat shit with Candy, but then drag Marlo. Okay. But Marlo, the reason why people drag you is because you have a history of being nasty to people on this show. You have said some of the most vile things on this television show, and it comes out of nowhere. It almost always comes out of nowhere. You use the F word slur on this show. I feel like you might be the only housewife who did. Nah, I don't believe that. I feel like there were others too. But Marlo, you make shit up about people. You make things up about people. And when people respond, you say that they have bad character. Just because you had your hands behind your back doesn't mean that you're not being, you're not antagonizing, right? She was. You started this whole situation. And I think ultimately that this is what Marlo wanted. She wanted Candy to get activated. She wanted to have a moment with Candy. And I think that she got that moment. But it's funny to like have these two teams huddled up outside. And I, I will laugh because this is like classic housewives, classic reality TV where people are complaining about somebody being aggressive while outside saying that they're going to bust their ass, you know, they're going to kill them. You know, speaking of that, I just want to say that not to go back to the restaurant show as people call it, but Vanderpump rules. People are really mad about Ariana and all the stuff she said about to Raquel and all this stuff. Somebody online posted all of the crazy things that Stassi said uh, about Kristen about the things that Kristen said about Ariana. Kristen said that I wish Ariana would get hit by a Mack truck over and over again. Um, Stassi said that I wish that um, I could cover a dildo in acid and like Kristen could fuck herself with it. That's her best friend. And and people were like, oh my God, Stassi's amazing. It's so funny. We love Kristen Doty, right? Like that stuff is fine. But what Ariana said for what happened to her, it was like a touch too far. Anyway, I I digress. The point is that it's funny to hear people be like, oh, that's so – she's so aggressive. Meanwhile, like Drew, Kenya, and Candy are talking about how they could <laughs> beat Marlo up. Like, come on, guys. You're all being aggressive. It's okay. And I think that Ken- Candy is in her right to be upset. I think that what's confusing about Marlo is that, one, she's a shit communicator. Two, she has a lot of trauma, and maybe she shouldn't be on television. And three, she is an opportunist. She's an opportunist. She's looking for a moment. She's looking to continue to stay on the show by riding on Candy's back. And like riding on Kenya's back by having fights with them and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's just it's I I think that Marlo also like I saw I think maybe an interview with Sonia on a podcast and she said something like Marlo expects a lot more from people because Marlo is a really giving person. But the thing is, I think Marlo is a giving person conditionally. I don't think that she's giving to people just to give to them. I think she's giving to them because it's like, I rub your back, you get mine later. Like, I'm sure she loves Michael and William, but she is going to hold that over those two boys' heads for the rest of their life. Like, I stopped my life and I didn't get to have kids and I took care of you and all this stuff. Like, it's they're going to owe it to her. And I think that's Marlo's issue is I think that she feels like people owe it to her because she's kind to them. But Candy doesn't owe you anything. And if anything, Candy got you this job on the show. Candy vouched for you all those years. And you came on the show and you talked cash money shit about her. So if Candy doesn't want to be your friend anymore, I think that that makes plenty of sense. Um, What's hilarious is like they obviously – Cousin Courtney obviously did not pay for the escape room. 
because they had to squeeze in a free Beat the Bomb promo at the end of the episode, like while credits were rolling. It was so silly. It was like, okay, Courtney, you could have just paid for it. You had four ladies go in there. I think it's fine. <laughs> How much was it? A hundred bucks? Like, come on, C- Courtney, get it together. Um, anyway, let's take a quick break for some water, and then I'll be right back to talk about uh, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Okay, I'm back. Um, I love this show. I love this show so much. I love this show so much. Um, I also love this show because I feel like people don't realize how stupid they look yet, and I love that about new reality TV, um, that people don't realize like how bad they look until they've been doing this for a little while. You know what I mean? Um, we open back up on the Bond villain dinner where everybody's been gifted watches and Jasmine is crying about how being married is a struggle. It's not easy. It's so isolating. You know, I hate to say it, but Bria is right. <laughs> the only person who is isolating themselves is Jasmine. Okay. The only person that is isolating Jasmine is Jasmine because she's acting like she's the first person in the entire universe to get married. Now, apparently these two dodo birds, Jasmine and Silas, got married like less than three months ago at the time that this show is filming. So, okay. Like, I does that give me a little bit? Does that have me give her a little bit of grace? Sure. But like, also, again, you're not the first person to get married. Okay. You're not. Um, they all head back to the house and the door opens and the dog Milo immediately books it. He does not want to be there, but they all go to bed and um, the Bond villain, what's his name? Carl? No, Simon, 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 the Bond villain does not want to have sex with Bria because he ate too much. And to be honest, I've never felt so seen in my life. I've never felt so seen in my life. Listen, listen to me. Okay. If I've eaten a delicious meal, it's not going to happen. If I have a full face of makeup on, it's not going to happen. If I've just done my skincare of all of my various serums, serums and potions and ointments and creams, it's not going to happen. I mean, I guess it could happen, but then you wouldn't touch my face, but I don't want that. I want to be loved on, but you can't love on me if I've got expensive skincare on my face or I've just done my makeup or if I have a belly full of food. (laughs) <laughs> we got to get me at the right time. <laughs> okay. Um, Jason and Jasmine talk the next morning and Jason is like, I really appreciate you being so transparent about like how it's hard for you to be like married. What's hard for you? You're fucking on Dolby surround sound every single day. Her, you know, honestly, sexually assaulting your housemates, if I'm going to be honest. Okay, it's an auditory assault, an assault on the senses every single day. What is, what are you isolating? How are you isolated? Okay, who, what, what are you talking about? Anyway, in the meantime, Shanice, my favorite goof troop is back. I love her. I love Shanice. This is a, this is a great episode for Shanice. Okay. And then Alex, that sneaky snake. I fucking hate Alex, guys. He's all like, hi, Shanice. How are you? Meanwhile, he was the one that was talking all this shit. We also find out that the Bond villain, Simon, had subscribed to Shanice. I was I was confused. Were Shanice and Bria together on OnlyFans? Were they, did they have like a joint account? Or did Shanice have her own account and Bria had her own account and Simon was subscribed to both? And also, is that how Bria met Simon? Was it through Only, OnlyFans? How did she meet this man who is a watch dealer? <laughs> He's a watch salesman? That's alarming. Because I feel like he is either pickpocketing or he's like in the subways in Munich with like a trench coat and like a bunch of watches. I have questions about Simon, but you know what, Bria, you keep doing your thing. Anyway, um, a house meeting is announced. <laughs> My favorite thing about the show is the house meetings. I hope they never stop having house meetings. I think that they are so funny. Uh, Summer sees that. The dog Milo has pooped. I should. I keep saying the dog Milo has pooped as if there is a, an adult Milo that has pooped, and I'm like, no adult is going to poop underneath the co- underneath the pool table. But then I remembered that that's probably something that could happen on regular summer house. I wouldn't be. I'm surprised that it hasn't happened. To be honest, the amount of places that Kyle Cook just like pisses, I'm surprised that he hasn't taken a dump somewhere. Anyway, 
Milo has pooped under the pool table. And Silas, Summer goes and tells Silas, which I thought was really dumb. Um, And then Silas is like really mad about it. And he's like, we need to have a house meeting. He goes to tell Preston that they need to have a house meeting. He walks past Bria's door to go and complain about Bria to Preston and demand that he wants to have a house meeting. And he wants to have a house meeting because he doesn't want to be the bad guy. Bro, people can hear you. You're walking past Bria's door bitching about her dog. I'm pretty sure she can hear you. But in the time that Silas, Mr. P- platoon leader, Mr. B- Mr. Like alpha platoon leader, I just like to take charge, can't go and tell a woman to go and clean up her dog shit. Get a grip. Get a grip, my friend. Um, the girls have a midday spa day uh, and they talk about boys and they're doing all kinds of masks and all this kind of stuff. Um, Jordan isn't interested in pursuing a relationship with Amir, um, but they are like doing little slumber parties together, which I feel like is also like just such a delight. Like I love getting into bed with my husband when there is just sleeping to be done. I recently saw a TikTok. And it was about like how people feel like they get, it was about not confusing falling asleep with your partner, like falling asleep every single time you're next to your partner with being bored by your partner. Being able to fall asleep soundly next to your partner is actually your body's response to feeling safe. And I just feel like I love that. I love, I love a slumber party that's not related to sexual interactions. So I feel like if Jordan is just having these like cute little slumber parties with Amir and then Shanice is in the other little bed, how cute. And at least then nobody is getting assaulted by the sounds of Silas and Jasmine fucking. Um, They're all talking anyway. Jordan doesn't care about pursuing a relationship with Amir or whatever. And I fucking love Shanice. Okay. She's got a mask on. She's deep throating cheese. She's talking about fucking some dude who's six, nine with a giant dick. I love her. I love everything about Shanice. I think she's so fun. And Shanice says she doesn't like Alex because of all of the shit talking he's doing about the situation with her ex. And Jasmine says, I feel like we're all in a really good place right now. So you should go talk to him about it, which is like kind of fucked up if you ask me. Like if Shanice is your friend, like is Shanice? Yeah, Shanice is Jasmine's friend. Shanice is not. I think Bria is Shanice's friend. So that's how they all know each other. But Shanice is definitely Jasmine's friend. If Alex has been talking shit about your friend, wouldn't you go and be like, hey, that's not a cool thing to do? But I feel like the dynamic here is so strange anyway. Also, why should Shanice go and try to talk to Alex when she tried to ask Alex what his problem was like two weeks ago and he was like being a total dick to her? So screw that. Um The girls have a girls' night and the guys have a guys' night. And the guys' night just proves that Silas is a dog shit person, okay? He's complaining that his wife is in vacation mode while they're on vacation and he's not – she's not making him breakfast every single day. He's like, I'm just – I'm a platoon leader, so I care about – suck my dick, okay, (laughs) with your platoon leader bullshit. I'm just, I'm all about business and I'm on my regular routine and routines are so important to me. And the breakfast wasn't great. And there was the, the cheese was burnt. (laughs) Shut up, Silas. He's so stupid. He tells Jason that being too nice and being too communicative. If you listen too much, you won't get any pussy. What are you talking about? Does Silas want Jason to be fucking somebody in the house? Like, I don't understand what's happening here. And then some ladies who I don't believe that those ladies actually sent a drink to the boys. I think the production put them up to it, but they get drinks sent to them. And Silas not only accepts the free drinks, but he's also not wearing his wedding ring. Suck my dick, Silas. You suck and I hate you. Meanwhile, at girls night, they're getting lit and they're having the time of their fucking life. There's twerking, there's handstands, there's falling into the bushes like Luann. There's some (laughs) white man is telling them to get out of his grip. They're getting naked. They're going skinny dipping. Dipping. The men come back and this is – Bria loses it. Okay, Bria's having fun. Bria's getting drunk. Bria is falling all over Shanice. Shanice is falling all over Bria. They're both skinny dipping. It's not a big deal. But when the men come back, Bria is not happy that Shanice gets fully butt-ass naked in front of her man. Despite the fact that, Bria, you also were butt-ass naked a few minutes before that. But 
Also, Bria, such a little terrorist. She's drunk and she knows what she's doing because she pulls in puritanical ass Silas into the mix while cooking steak in the middle of the night. I love that chaos. I really do. I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. Um, the next morning, <laughs> Bria says she's going to chew everybody out because she's like, it's so fucked up. They're all so fake. Like they all sat around and they didn't say anything about Shanice, you know, getting naked. What, what did you want? What did you want them to do? Everybody was drunk, first of all. And Jason's right. If somebody takes their clothes off and puts her boobs in front of my face. What am I going to say? Uh, no, no boobs. No, Jason loved it. And Shanice, it's a bomb body. And is Shanice a, a maniac for doing that? Sure. But your man, Bria, is European. Okay. <laughs> He's a European Bond villain. Okay. Who subscribes regularly to women's only fans. I'm pretty sure he is not surprised when he sees boobs or vaginas. Okay. I think it's not that big a deal, but it's so funny because Bria goes one by one to each and every person. She's going and sitting with every person to complain. It's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 59 minutes, 125 minutes later. She's complaining. She's calling her mom. She's complaining about Shanice's butt ass nakedness. And She's again, she's doing the thing that I pointed out last week, which is where she does a thing, somebody else also does the thing, and then she gets mad. Like, let me rephrase that. She does a thing, and then unannounced, right? She does like an unpredictable thing, and then she gets mad when people have a reaction. You were getting drunk and partying with Shanice. Everybody was drunk and everybody was naked together. You also were naked with Shanice. And then you got mad when Shanice was still naked and you weren't. Like you are mad because somebody else did the exact same thing that you did. You're just mad at the reaction that people give you when you do a thing that is unpredictable, which is why Bria makes an excellent reality TV star. Um, Alex, Jordan, Amir, and Shanice go and play tennis. And nasty ass, snake ass Alex is like, oh, these girls don't sound sexy enough. Fuck you, Alex. I hate Alex. I hate him so much. He sucks. He fucking sucks. Um, they're gonna do a rose brunch, and Bria is not gonna come down for it because she's mad about the skinny dipping. And then apparent and then also Shanice is like, I don't understand what the big deal is because. We used to all skinny dip together in front of my ex all the time. So again, see, Bria, Bria's a lunatic and I love her um, in that I, she terrifies me and I would never want to know her in real life, but she's great on TV. Um, the guys are taking out a table and Silas, <laughs> Silas says he, he's a platoon leader and that's why he has to be so kind to Sarah. <laughs> he sucks. He sucks so bad. Oh, also one other scene. I think it was like after the drinking, he like gets into bed with Jasmine Silas and he's like, oh, I have to tell you these women, they bought me drinks and I have to tell you I drank one. And Jasmine jokingly is like, oh, wow, you could have gotten drugged. And he's like, you're being so dramatic. And she's like obviously joking with him. And then he's like, babe, do you know what my biggest fear is? And she's like, anal. And he's like, what? Why would you say that? And I'm like, oh, okay. I know exactly the kind of guy you are. I know exactly the kind of guy you are. I know the kind of guy you are, Silas. You're Mr. Macho, Mr. I got to protect my woman. No one touches my butt. I'm a platoon leader. <laughs> I don't have to wear my ring. If you're nice to girls, you don't get pussy. Like He's the worst kind of guy. <laughs> and then he's condescending. He's a dick. And then later on, he's like telling Jasmine, you left me out to dry and you made me look bad. You made the situation worse by standing there and not defending me. Bro, are you kidding me? And then he's like, I don't like the clothes you're wearing. Or he says something about like, oh, I like that dress. Is that a dress that I got you? Actually, everything you wear is I got what I got you. He sucks. I hate him so much. Like he's trying to control her, what she's going to wear. Don't wear this. I don't like wide leg pants. Why are you going to wear shoes like that? Whatever. It's ridiculous. Um, Alex tells Jordan that she's looking thick. You fucking creep. Fuck off. He tells Jordan that she was assigned to Amir. Are you for fucking real? <laughs> 
He says, when we all got here, you were assigned to Amir, so I haven't really been able to get to know you. What a creep. What a fucking creep. Anyway, they're having their little backyard brose brunch. And Shanice, just to be the chaotic queen that she is, <laughs> shows up at the balcony with a glass of rosé in her hand and a bottle in the other hand with no top saying, you know what? That's it. My titties are out and I don't care. She said titties on five. That's what she said. She said, guys, what about me or something like that? I love Shanice. I think Shanice is perfect. I think she's a perfect reality TV star. I love Shanice. <laughs> Shanice, don't ever put a top back on. You're, you have a beautiful body and you know what? We should free the nipples. These guys, these all these dudes are like doing all these workouts and like all this shit outside every single day, topless. Okay. And now you're like, oh my God, Shanice is always showing us her boobs. Big deal. Their boobs grow up, grow the fuck up. Okay. Titties on five. That's what I think. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I know it was a little short cutie. Um, I'll be back later this week. I'm going to be covering secrets and sisterhoods um, at some point later on this weekend. I plan on binging it. Hopefully I can get somebody to come on to talk with me about it. Um, And I will also be back to talk about We're Housewives of OC. Um, So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.